value at risk here in this video. Uh, we will calculate value at risk for portfolio and we will use the following three methods. Historical method, delta normal method and the optimality of value at risk as well. Now, for example, uh, we have these three stocks and we can get the data of one year period by using stock history function. And uh, this is uh, our first stock, Microsoft. Then uh, start date by using today function. As we need uh, one year data, so we will subtract 365. And up to today, comma, uh, we need daily data, so we press zero. Then with no header, and we just need a closing price one. Now just copy it to the B and C cell so that we can get the daily data of Google as well as Apple. Now the first we will calculate a stock return by using log, log function. Ending divided by beginning. And just copy it to the next two column so that we can get uh, daily returns of each stock. Now, uh, as we know that for uh, uh, portfolio uh, risk, uh, uh, sorry, uh, uh, the value of risk for our, uh, portfolio and by using historical method, uh, we need to calculate uh, uh, portfolio return. Uh, for portfolio return, uh, we use uh, uh, the concept of matrices. Now here we want to calculate portfolio return. Now using M mult function. And uh, the weights, uh, the returns are already transposed, so we don't need to transpose the returns. Just uh, use uh, these returns comma and then we have the weights uh, these are our weights that should be fixed first we will calculate weights as well no because uh, here we don't have weights so first of all we calculate weights one divided by this fixed amount F4 and then just copy it down and sum of it should be equal to 1. Now copy down for the rest of returns for uh, uh, different uh, daily returns data. Uh, now look at just count we have uh, how many 250 uh, observations. Now to get the uh, historical value at risk for portfolio, uh, we will use a percentile function. Here I am using a percentile function equal to percentile. Then this is our array. And then comma. Uh, with 5% probability, so 0 0.05. So historical value at risk for portfolio is the minus 0 0.03646. Just highlight it. Now we want to calculate uh, uh, this uh, uh, value at risk for portfolio by using delta normal math method. For a delta normal method, we need a Z value. Uh, by using uh, norm inverse function. This one. And probability is 0 0.05 and this value is minus 1.64. And then we need this uh, standard deviation of uh, portfolio. For first we calculate variance of portfolio. And then we will take uh, its standard deviation. Means by taking under root, uh, we will get standard deviation. Now, uh, for to get uh, uh, this uh, variance of portfolio, uh, 
we will use the concept of matrices again and uh, uh, for uh, uh, matrices uh, uh, as we will apply the concept of matrices we need uh, uh, to get to calculate this uh, variance of portfolio we need variance and covariance matrix so first of all we uh, will calculate this variance and covariance matrix I have already explained in my uh, different videos that how we can get uh, this variance covariance matrix. Now just uh, calculate first of all average. Average of first stock. So, so this is your average. And uh, it starts from here. And then just press step. Now copy it to the next cell, two cells, so that we can get the average of uh, next two stocks. Uh, so now we calculate deviations for deviations. We subtract uh, this average value from each value of these returns for each asset. Minus, just fix it. Similarly, for second stock, we again we need deviation. Minus F4, fix it, and the same way for third stop. Minus this one. And sum of deviation from mean is always zero. We will check it. Uh, we will also check it. Now the check first one. Yes, it is almost zero. 0 and 0. It, it, it means that it's OK. Now we need a uh, variance covariance matrix. For variance covariance matrix, for example, here, M alt, then uh, transpose this data means these deviations. And multiplied by again these deviations and divided by number of observation here. As we don't uh, remember that, what uh, what are number of uh, how many number of observation? Just we will use count function count and just uh, for example. Now oh, this is your count function. And now enter. So this is basically our variance covariance matrix. So calculate variance of portfolio. For variance of portfolio, we again use the, the concept of matrices M mult function. M mult, then M mult transpose weights. And that should be multiplied by variance covariance matrix. And that is uh, multiplied by weights again. So this is variance of take its root power point. Five. So this is standard equation. Calculate the value at risk. Just delete it by multiplying the C value by standard deviation of portfolio, and you get almost uh, minus one. 0, 3, 6, 4, uh, value that is best. Uh, this historical value at least for portfolio. Now for optimization purpose. Even uh, you can change the weights as well and you will get different. Uh, for example, just change the weight. Like here you can see that now results are changed. Now for optimization that uh, uh, how we can reduce uh, uh, this value at risk. Uh, by use of uh, 
optimization concept. Now just go to uh, data analysis. Sorry, uh, go to data and then select solver. Now here, let's say we want to minimize variance of portfolio by changing weights and the condition the only constraint is that sum of weight is equal to one okay now solve this one yes solver has solution and then okay uh, if we, for example, invest 47% in first stock, 5% in second stock, and almost 46% uh, uh, in the third stock, our value at risk can be minimized. And you can see that it is now minus 0.03508. Uh, thank you very much for watching this video.